Amazing. Now you don't have to actually create different text styles for different devices. Figma's back with another variables update, and this time it's with fonts. They're finally allowing us to add font families and weights and sizes uh, to our variables table and apply them directly to our designs. Why is that helpful, you ask? Well, not only does that help you keep things more consistent by utilizing more of your tokens from your variables tables, this means that now using variables, you can create uh, mobile friendly fonts without having to set up new styles. So let's see how that actually applies to your own design files. Let's jump in and take a look. All right, so I have a project opened up here. Now this is a project that I did on one of the workshops where I used variables to create a realistic prototype here. If you're interested to check that out, there should be a link somewhere down below. In this frame, I have a heading font here with the font family of Playfair display that's bolded in terms of the font weight and it's 28 pixels. And then we have various other fonts like this one here, which is uh, Roboto, 18 point, and it's bold. And one that's Roboto, 14, and it's regular. Now, of course, if you already have font styles set up in your local styles, you can go ahead and actually apply font variables there as well. Or you can directly create a text style from the elements that you already have. So if you don't have styles set up, I do recommend you do set that up. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and just click the heading font that I have here and just call it H1 and hit create style. So now we have this style here and we can access it over here and we can edit everything about it over here so we can make it bigger or smaller change the weight and everything. And now how do we apply variables here? To apply variables, you need to head on over to local variables. Now we already have variables set up or a collection already created. So let's create a new collection that's specifically for fonts. So I'm going to call this collection fonts. And I'm going to create a variable now we can apply variables to the font size, to the font family, to the font weight. The ones where we can apply number is the font size. But when it comes to the font weight and font family name, that's where you use a string variable. So let's hit string. For this one, I'm going to call it family dash heading. And so basically, I'm creating a group called family. And under it, I have a variable called heading with a string variable or value here. And we're going to go ahead and change that to the name of the font itself. So for our case, it's Playfair display spelled like this. It's crucial that you spell it exactly as it appears in the font settings. So make sure you apply it the same way. And so this way now I can actually head on over to the properties of my local style for that H1 property. And instead of having a font selected here from the font list that I have, I can apply a variable. Let me close this so it's not in the way. I'm going to apply a variable of font family heading. Now, of course, nothing changed. That's how it should appear if you do it correctly. But if I go back in here and as an example, change this font heading name to, let's say, Anton, as you can see, a new font's been applied over there. I'm going to do play for display again. And so now, as you can see, the font weight is reset. So that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and also create a variable, this time string as well. And we're going to do weight slash bold because we want the font weight for the h1 to also be bold and for the property we want to do bold now of course for your font this may be different and how would you know if you start typing something in play for a display for example down here you can see all the different weights that you can apply so it might be different depending on the font that you're using so make sure that you apply your variables the same way and so now similar to what we did for our font family name we can also do the same thing for the weight and you can do that by apply variable down here let's find weight bold and now it's bold again 
Lastly, the font size. So we can actually set up sizes as numbers in our variable table. We can do size dash small. Hit shift enter here to create another variable in the same group. And do medium, shift enter, do large, shift enter, do extra large, shift enter to do x large. I think that should be enough for now. We had uh, 14 for small, so let's do 14 here. For medium, let's do 18. For large, we can do 24, extra large, 28, and xx large, 32. Now these are sample numbers I'm putting in. Of course, you can use your own font scale as you'd like. Uh, and now what we can do is we can apply variable all the way down here for the font size of this font styles and this one is 28 so it will be the extra large in our case and so now of course let's say you want to also apply it to these the text um, in the body here you have roboto bold 18 so to do that you can I can directly apply it here. You don't need to necessarily create a style, but it's definitely best practice to create a style so you can reuse it elsewhere. And this way you don't have to change the variable everywhere you have this font style used. And so if I create a style now of, let's say body dash bold, Inside of here, I can apply a new variable for a Roboto. And for this bold, we already have a variable, so we can apply variable bold. And for 18, we already have a variable. We can apply font size medium. So let's just head back to local variables. And under family, I'm going to go ahead and hit shift enter to write body. And the body one's going to be Roboto, spelled exactly as it is. And so now for my body bold, I can also apply a variable over here. Going to set up another one, body dash two. For this one, we're going to set a font of 14 using our variable. Whoops. If you made a mistake, you can quickly change it here. We'll leave this one as a regular. And instead of enter here, we want the body create style. So now we can apply to these two our new body two. I'm gonna also do a body one. And that one's going to be Roboto. We'll leave that as is. And the size here will be 18 or medium. And I can apply that to these ones over here. Body one. Now let's say for these ones, you don't want to create a font family. You can also link them here. So let's do Roboto. Let's do apply variable bold and for the font size we're going to do large that works so all the font here excluding the card in here everything else is using variables and if at some point let's say we want to change our sizes so small instead of 14 is 16. Anything that's using small will scale up. Now that could also be useful if you set up different device sizes. So let's say we do a second mode here. So the first mode will be for mobile and the second one for web. And maybe on web, we want to use bigger font sizes, which typically is the case. So we can scale up our fonts appropriately and so this way let's say now we want to actually design this frame for the web so 
Maybe we'll expand it, remove this, and move these around. And whenever we decided, okay, this is going to be a web instead of a mobile design. Of course, we can go over here for the layer and choose fonts and do web. But as you can see, all the fonts here scaled up. Amazing. Now you don't have to actually create different textiles for different devices. So that's a new update from Figma on font variables. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated with the latest videos. Also, if you like the designs that I just showed you in the Figma file there, we actually designed that over a six week cohort based course that I put together on how to master product design in six weeks. If you're interested, there's a link below in the chat and there's an upcoming cohort in June. So I hope you can join us there.